we always commented on how weird it was that the two of us were just in the apartment together alone because the crew is usually all around so you're like yeah this is my job i'm doing my job this is but we'd just be hanging out going are we being filmed right now <laughs> like My name is Natasha Lubodizzo and I play Margot, who is a woman who is very much not in her power. She's in a marriage that is not healthy for several reasons and she does not have a career that fulfills her. So the film for her has an arc that's very much about her coming into her power and she's not all that meets the eye. When I first read the script for the project, I just hadn't seen an erotic thriller come across me for so long. I feel like it's a kind of a revival of that genre in a way since those iconic films from decades ago. So it was really cool and unique in that in that sense. And I wouldn't necessarily do an erotic thriller if not for the script that it was. And it's so smart and so edgy. And Michael, the director, is just someone who makes me feel very safe and comfortable. And that's the only way that I would do this kind of material. And that's just how I felt from when I read it. I was thinking, I read a lot of scripts and it's been a while since I've seen one like this. It really stood out for those reasons. And yeah, it's really fun. The cast for this film, they all have the coolest trajectories ahead of them and behind them. I love that much like in the film, Sydney and Justice are the Americans who come to Montreal and then Ben and I are sort of these mysterious foreigners. Cause in real life, the four of us would joke about that dynamic a lot where we would talk about like London-y things with Ben and Australian things with me. And then the fact that we all spend a lot of time in America now because we've kind of moved here. And they all have such unique careers and unique qualities. And that really came out in the film and I think made the film really dynamic because of how different we all are. And the fact that it is based in Montreal adds to the erotic thriller element because it's such a sexy like french city and it's foreign and so it was the best choice of cast i think that could have been made the way that we shot the film was really unique for ben and i because we obviously have never done something where we're half the film were shot from the perspective of binoculars so we always commented on how weird it was that the two of us were just in the apartment together alone because the crew is usually all around so you're like yeah this is my job i'm doing my job this is but we'd just be hanging out going are we being filmed right now <laughs> like it had that element of are we we actually don't know if we're being filmed we started to feel like we were living the film out in real life but it was really fun because there was much more room for improving and we didn't have marks that we had to hit. Instead, we had like anti-marks where there were areas where you couldn't go because you'd be blocked by the window pane or you'd be blocked by a piece of furniture. So it felt like we were putting on a play because we had to figure out what read on camera and what didn't and what looked too big or unrealistic or what didn't. So it was really fun and different. I went to a very academic high school in Sydney, Australia and it was a very diverse school. It was actually a really high pressure, highly competitive school. And then from there, I got into the law degree that I thought I always wanted to get into. And I did a year of it and was not <laughs> feeling the fulfillment that I thought I would feel. And I attended an open call audition for my first film, which was the Netflix sequel to Crouching Tiger and Dragon. And I booked it with zero experience it's just one of those crazy stories that i never tell actors because they're like oh you're one of those people that like <laughs> just picked up off the street i've thought about this a lot more later in life but i think a lot of the reason why i never thought i could be an actor is just because there was no asian faces on tv and film and media in australia slash maybe the western world but that was probably part of it because i always was very drawn to film sets i worked behind the scenes just as a hobby like back in the day when I was studying law I would like go to Fox Studios in Sydney and I worked as a body double I just helped around set because I loved being on set it didn't click for me that I could ever actually be on camera until it happened and it just felt very natural and seamless but I think that's why I never had aspirations to be an actor there just wasn't an example specifically and I'm very grateful that that seems to be shifting I didn't think I'd ever do an erotic thriller I don't know if I'll do another one it has to depend on all those things but I just want to keep doing different things I think all the projects I've done thus far make no consistent sense so I'm just gonna keep doing that <laughs>
I think I pushed away from it because I have done martial arts most of my life and it was the reason that I was cast in my first role. And it has been an element that's definitely benefited my career. But I think right after I did Crouching Tiger, there was a lot of scripts thrown my way to be, you know, pigeonholed as they say, as one of those Chinese background or mixed Asian background kind of martial arts, like sexy. And that's a great role. I want to do more of that, but I don't want that to be it. So I think I made a real decision to to make the next film completely different, which is why I went and did like Hotel Mumbai, which is based on the Mumbai terrorist attacks and completely different because I really wanted to veer away from that. And it seems to have worked because now martial arts in my life just sits in a place where it can really add to roles, but it's not the one and only, like not, it's not the thing that drives choices in my career. It's just an added bonus. I kind of swing between wanting to be really outspoken about things versus swinging back to being quite silent about them, but letting my career speak for itself of like, I'm just inserting my face into places where it would not not have been allowed to be before. And that's part of what I think is most of what I want to happen is just for like my nephews to watch me in, even I did like a Australian rom-com and the only reason I did it was really because I was like, I've never seen an Asian love interest in an Australian film. And I just wanted to be part of that. And sometimes that's the deciding factor of why I do projects. I think it's something I learn and keep relearning along the way about where I fit into things as a mixed race Asian, because I have to, I think, again, it's a case by case thing where you have to be respectful of like source material. If something was Korean or Japanese, whether the fact that I'm Chinese background means that it's not appropriate for me to take that story versus if it was like a fictional source, then it's like, doesn't matter. And because I am mixed, I have, I'm very aware of like where that gives me privilege and where it makes it inappropriate for me to play certain things. But then I'm also like, but I am Chinese and I really own that because I speak Mandarin and I spend a lot of time in China and I'm very close with my Chinese family and I've been to China a lot. But I think mixed race actors are at least being part of that now, even though it's still complicated with casting and with source material and what we can and can't play. I think at least the fact that we're even at the table now is very nice. <laughs> I think there was a period where I was like, yeah, but I'm mixed race. But now I'm like, no, I'm Chinese. Like I am proud to be Chinese.